Good morning, Facebook, YouTube. Good to see you today. Thanks for tuning in with Mark Young Hands. Get to know God. Today is Thursday, March 21st. We're going to be going through the uh, book of Romans, chapter 15. I hope you took some time to read it before today, just so you can kind of get some background information. That way, when I'm going through, you'll be able, you'll be able to ask yourself, did I, did I catch that? Did I see that? Well, I think this meant that instead, that we can kind of challenge yourself and, and test yourself. So that's what it's about, is getting to know the Word of God for yourself. So make sure you spend some time in the Word. Like, And I always say, I need to improve. So don't don't use you know, guilt or shame of not of, of not doing it before, but start today and move forward. So it don't matter what you did yesterday or the day before, but today's a new day. And, and get into your Bible. Get into the Word and study. So again, we're going to go through the uh, chapter 15 and then next week I'm gonna be out of town going to Pennsylvania for business so not sure yet if I'll be doing a Bible study from there I might try to do it on Sunday and just get it out early we'll have to see how that works out otherwise I'll get it to you the following week so the first week in April the first Thursday in April so we'll see how that works out but otherwise we're gonna go through chapter 15 let's pause for a moment of prayer Heavenly Father, I just pray that you will help us to all have a renewed spirit, Lord. Help us to truly believe that we can turn away from yesterday and the day before, Lord, and we can start fresh today, regardless of what it is that we have done, you know, no matter where we've been or what we've done with our time, how we've treated people, Lord, we can start today. We can change today. We can put the time in to read your word today. Put the time in to read your Bible today, Lord, and move forward, Lord. Let's build upon today. Let's start to build a solid foundation today, Lord. Help us to give, forgive ourselves, Lord, and please forgive us. And then help us to forgive ourselves, Lord, of the, the things that we have done so we can move forward with no guilt or shame, Lord. We just thank you for the, the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit will be in, at work in our lives, Lord, revealing things to us that we need to change, things we need to work on, and things we need to forgive ourselves for, Lord. So I just thank you for your love and your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so chapter 15. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. So infirmities are just weaknesses or illnesses. So we that are strong need to bear the infirmities and bear the weaknesses of the weak and not to please ourselves. So we need to be out, you know, to serve others. Remember, we're servants of Jesus Christ. We're servants of God. We're here to serve, but we're servants of Jesus Christ. So we are here to serve in God's name. So we that are strong should be helping those that are weak and for God, serving for God. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Edification is just like to uplift or to enlighten, kind of encourage, um, promote, like that so for even Christ pleased not himself but as it is written the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me so again for even Christ pleased not himself because the, the first one says we're not here we should we're, we're not here to please ourselves we're here to help the weak those are strong help the weak and then it says even Christ did that he was here to help the weak he, he was very strong but he was here to help the weak which is us Okay, Jesus Christ came here to help us, weak, dead in our sin, lost in our sin. Okay, and so it says that even Christ did not please himself. As it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. So the reproaches, reproach means, I looked it up, let's see, reproach, we got to express disapproval of, criticism of, or disappointment in. So, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. So the reproaches of them not approving of God, them not trusting in Jesus, I mean, them, them disapproving, not believing that the works he were doing were of God, and, and then them crucifying him, That all that actually fell back on Jesus because he saved them people from that reproach of what they targeted him, which is a crazy concept. They killed him and he saved them from it before they even did it. They were, he was saved, just, just think about that. The very people who put him on the cross who, who crucified him had the chance to trust in him. That's crazy. That's love. That's love. That's love right there. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. 
that we, through patience and comfort of the Scripture, might have hope. Again, for whatever things were written aforetime, so whatever was written before, so let's say there are other books in, in the New Testament, but mainly even the Old Testament, the things that were written before were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. Through all this book, this knowledge is supposed to create hope and God's there. God's real. Jesus is real. He really died on the cross for us. You, you get salvation through Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. So be like-minded with Christians. Um, God granted us his patience with us. Consolation grant you to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus. That ye may be with one mind and one mouth. Glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as Christians, you know, our ultimate goal is to edify and glorify God, to uplift God in Jesus Christ. And so we should be doing that together. Um, there are different scriptures, you know, that there's, obviously there's different denominations within the Christian faith. Matter of fact, let's back up and talk about that for a second. I think a lot of people don't understand that. They'll be like, you know, what, um, are you a Christian? They'll say, no, I'm a Catholic. I'm going to say, are you a Christian? They'll say, no, I'm Baptist. They don't, you know, I just want to help people understand. So anybody who believes in Jesus Christ is a Christian. So Catholics believe in Christ, Baptists, Lutherans, all of them, they, they believe in Jesus Christ, so they are Christian. They believe, no, I should say this, they believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the Messiah, who is coming back to save us, who is coming back again, okay? The reason I had to clarify that is that Muslims even believe in Jesus Christ. They just don't believe in Him uh, as the Son of God. So, I would say the Christians are those who believe Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the Messiah coming back to save us. The Son of God, because Muslims don't believe that part. Now that we got that clear, so anybody who believes in Christ in that position is a Christian. Now within the Christian faith, we have different... I just noticed I like to use my hands a lot, I don't know why. But um, within the Christian faith, we have different denominations. So that's where your Lutheran is a denomination, your Catholic is a denomination, Baptist, all that. That's a different denomination. Then you also have non-denominational churches, which sometimes are part of a conference and then it's pretty much a denomination because they all still have the same view of how they view whatever they view and so now it's kind of like a new denomination but same thing so I just wanted to clarify that now we're on verse <clears throat> verse 7 wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God so receive one another you know accept your brother don't don't try to put him down don't belittle him don't try to crush his spirits don't try to you know be negative towards him don't steal from him don't try to kill him don't take his girlfriend none of that okay receive your brother treat him as a, as a Christian should treat somebody now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers so what that verse this is gonna be a longer study but so Verse 8, that's referring to the Old Testament, how the, 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 the Israelites had a covenant with God. And, and a sign of that covenant, as we talked, touched on different studies, different chapters, were um, they got circumcised. And that was a sign of them being one with God, being circumcised. And then it says, so now as I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. So like that connection, that truth of then back to the old times to confirm that the promises made unto the fathers back then God made promises with different uh, men saying well you, your family would rule for a certain period of time or you would be blessed because you did this because you honored God you trusted in me like that and so uh, verse 9 and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy so the Gentiles are anybody who's not Israelite so the Gentiles so the Israelites had that circumcision with God, which was showing that they were united. They, Israel is God's chosen people. And so um, the Gentiles, which is anybody who's non-Israelite, might glorify God for his mercy. So we were not God's chosen people, but because of his mercy, we are accepted in. So we are glorifying God for that. It says, as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among thee, the Gentiles, and sing unto the name. And again, he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with this people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and loud him. Loud is just a glorified praise. It says, uh, um, Lord, all ye Gentiles, and, and praise him, all ye people. 
And again, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles in him shall, shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope. Hope for what is to come. Hope in Jesus Christ that it is real, that he's really saving us from our sin, that he's really going to return, that he's really the son of God. So now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Joy in what's about to happen. Joy in trusting in God. Joy in knowing that it's real. In believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Verse 14. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. So this is Paul writing. Paul wrote the book of Romans. Paul is writing saying that he should be the minister of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ ministered to the Gentiles, anybody who's not Israelite, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Read that again. That the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore whereof I may glorify through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. I have therefore... Therefore, whereof I may glorify through Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ who empowers us, who gives us the ability to be able to do what we are doing through the Holy Ghost. But it's, it's, it, we, that glory comes to God. It's not about us. It's about what God is doing for us and through us. So don't take, don't take credit for that. Don't take credit for what God has done. Okay? For I will not dare to speak of any of the, those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. So it's saying that none of this work that Paul has done, none of this outreach that he has had, none of this, none of his ministry is because of him. He doesn't, he didn't have the strength. This is what Jesus Christ has done through him. So pastors who have a huge, you know, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm not, I can't judge nobody, and I'm not, and I wouldn't want to. But I'm saying that even those who are anointed, who have a huge ministry, please don't take credit for how big your ministry has become, or the difference your ministry has made, or the outreach you have across the world. You know, that is all Jesus Christ and what they have allowed you to do. Feel blessed that God has given you that, okay? Feel blessed. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yes, yeah, so I have strived to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Huh? Can we hear that one more time? Just think about that. Yeah, to think about this and what this means to the future pastors and, and, and people, evangelists and people who are, you know, Christians. I guess we're all supposed to, pre, you know, go out and preach the gospel. So just listen to this. This is verse 20, so you can go study it for yourself. But it says, yeah, so have I strived to preach the gospel, as we are all called to do, to go preach the gospel. Not where Christ was named. So not where people already know about it, not where people have already been told about Jesus Christ, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. And that's why we're supposed to go around the world to preach to everybody who has never heard, to preach to the different tribes, the different nations, the different, the different countries, you know what I'm saying? So right here it says that, yes, yeah, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Build upon another man's foundation who was already there preaching Christ. 21 says, But as it is written, To whom he was not spoken of, there shall see, and they have not heard shall understand. But as it is written, To whom he was not spoken of. Think about it. That's okay. I just caught this right now. It just, it just hit me. So, To whom he was not spoken of. To whom he, who's he? Jesus Christ. 
The last verse says, don't build upon another man's foundation. Go and preach to those who have not been preached to yet. Those who have not had a chance to talk about, hear about Jesus Christ and the good works. And I mean, not the good works, but the good thing that he has done for us through his grace. So it says that don't go preach where he's already been preached. And then it says here, to whom he was not spoken of. So to the people who have not had a chance to hear yet, those who have not been led, led through the gospel yet, it says, they shall see. If they have not been led yet, but they shall see, and they have not heard, shall understand. And if they have not heard, they will understand, it says. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. But now having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire these many years to come unto you, whosoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you. For I trust to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way Thitherward, how we said, hitherward, hitherward, by you. If first I be somewhat filled with your company. So this is Paul speaking to the Romans, and he's still saying, "I want to come to you. I've, I've, I've longed to come see you." As he said in different different chapters in, in in Romans, he said, "I've longed to come see you and the people, and I look forward to coming." And he's saying that again, and he said that he'll be filled with their company. But now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in the carnal things. So if us, if, if us Gentiles have believed them in the spiritual things, started to do the praise and worship, come to study and learn, that we if we're partaking that with with the Romans or you know, with the Israelites that we also they should also be teaching us how to change from our carnal things which are the things of the flesh of the body the sexual sins and things like that that we need to start you know they need to be teaching us and ministering to us in that way to help us overcome those things you know not just a better relationship with Jesus Christ but to actually turn from our old ways as well which I believe happens through the gospel we will turn from your old ways in appreciation for what Jesus has done for you, for what God has done for you, for the for the grace God has given you, for the blessings he has given you, no matter how tough your life is or someone who has it tougher. So no matter what, you have something to be thankful for. And so you need to turn from your sins in appreciation for that, for what God has done for you. When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. So he just said that <clears throat> he's going to go to... Jerusalem to help them teach them that yes they have reached the Gentiles they've helped them in the spiritual way now they need to help them overcome the carnally things and then once that is done like then it says that he, you have sealed them this fruit so you know you, you bear the fruit that you you reap the fruit that you sow so you reap what you sow and you bear the fruit that you the, the seeds that you sow so He's just saying that he's going to go there and bear this fruit. He's going to go there and teach. And then once that, that fruit is sealed, then I will come unto you to Spain. I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Like, why did he write that? Think about that one more time. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. I shall come in the fullness of, of and the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Like, why did he put that in there? What does that mean? Like, why, why would he not be coming in that? You know what I'm saying? So, why, I mean, it's great that he put it in there for us, but I'm just wondering, like, they, they, they should have understood and already known, you know, that he's going to come in the fullness and the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Why wouldn't he be coming in that way? But, now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Read that again. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. So he's saying, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for this ministry. Pray for my outreach. Pray for my, you know, my understanding of God's word. Pray for me to seek God's will. Pray for me. Pray for me. Just like I ask you guys, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me in these times that I need to, that I'm trying to break down the word for you. Pray that I am not doing anything in vain. Pray that I'm putting in the time to study it. Pray that I'm living my life right so that I'm not just here preaching and teaching and not living that life. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me that when I'm in my hour of temptation that I overcome it. Pray for me. Okay? 
that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. Now the Lord, now the God of peace be with you at all. Amen. <clears throat> so he just said he's gonna be he's trying to go to Spain, he's trying to go to Rome. And he says that, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God. That I, I will have joy and peace when I'm coming to you. And may and may with you be refreshed. So just think of when you go to church though. You when you go into church, you should have joy. You're going there to to sorry, the sun's kind of getting mods. But when you go to church and you hear the word of God, you're around the body of believers, that brings joy to you. And you should be refreshed when you leave. And that's what he's saying here too. That, that, that when he does go there, he sh he's asking by the will of God that he will have joy there. And that with them they will be refreshed together. And that's what church does for me. It helps you, it helps you your moral compass. It helps you get back on track. It helps you slow down and appreciate God. It, it refreshes you. So find that peace. Find that joy in, in God. Trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Again, we do got one more chapter in the book of Romans. We got chapter 16, which we're gonna I'm gonna try to do this next week. Otherwise, I'll get it to you the following week because I'll be out of town. Uh, so yeah, but you can still study it. Make sure you get into your word. Go back, watch the other videos. So there'll be a total of 16 videos for our study in the book of Romans. Um, I think it went really well. I'm glad that God finally got me off my off my butt and finally made these videos. So God is good. He's patient. And he's kind, and He loves you. He loves me. Start today. I don't care what you did yesterday. Start today. Today's a new day to change your life. To turn away from your carnal things, the fleshly things. So I, I'm, I'm going to continue to work to do the same. I'll pray for you. Pray for me. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. This is Mark Young as we get to know God. God bless.